Hey guys, I'm Richard Older and welcome to the channel. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. Today, it's all about carburetors. And here's the question. How well does the new version of the Holley two barrel, you know, 500 CFM, 4412 flow compared to the old version? This one, you guys remember the OG piece. All of the circle track guys are really gonna wanna know that, but more importantly, the reason I did this, I wanted to find out how well a two barrel flows compared to a four barrel. And I know what you're thinking, Richard, that seems so simple. A four barrel is gonna make more power because it flows more. But here's the thing, when they rate these, they rate them at different depressions. That means a four barrel flows differently than a two barrel. What I wanted to do is get them both up on the flow bench, flow both of them at the same depression and find out how well they work. And because we're here at West Tech, we got lots of carburetors. I flowed lots of carburetors. Let's check it out. Okay guys, before we get to the flow rate of all of our different carburetors, the one barrel, two barrel, and all of the four barrels, we need to talk about the ratings game, and that's this. The carb manufacturers rate the flow rate of their two barrel, like a 500 CFM two barrel or a 750 CFM four barrel, they rate them differently. Well, how are they different? They rate them at different depressions. That's the amount of air draw below the carburetor. So why would they do that? They have a different draw on the two barrel than they do on the four barrel. And the reason for that is very simple. What they figure is a two barrel on any size motor is gonna represent more of a restriction. So there's going to be more draw sucking on that two barrel than there is on the four barrel. And while that's true, obviously, if you put a two barrel on a 500 ZFM or a 500 cubic inch motor it's going to have more of a restriction and it's going to be more draw and it's going to flow more but what i wanted to find out and for for your guys for the tech guys out there your information when they rate a 500 cfm two barrel they're rating that at three inches of mercury which the way that we tested on a flow bench is the equivalent of 40 inches of water. Yes, I know, more math. But on the four barrel, it's half that. They rate the flow rate of a four barrel at 1.5 inches of mercury, which would be the equivalent of 20 inches of vacuum. So if you're now you're totally confused, I'm right there with you. But they rate them at different depressions. But what I wanted to do was figure out what these two barrels flow and what these four barrels flow and also the little one barrel what they all flow when we flow them exactly the same. And don't worry, I'm gonna give you a big list at the end of what they all flow at the different depressions, but they'll all be the same. And you can figure out, hey, a one barrel flows less than a two barrel and the two barrel flows less than the four barrel. Now let's get to the flow results. So the first thing we're gonna do when we test these carburetors is we gotta make sure that there's no leaks. So we put our system up, clamped it down, we got a Wilson two barrel to four barrel adapter. We have it taped over. And then all we have to do is turn this thing on. We need to see if there's any leakage. And we actually have a negative number. So even at 28 inches of vacuum, and we're only gonna be testing at five, at 28 inches of vacuum, we got zero leak. So now we know that all the airflow, we know that all the airflow that goes through this is coming through the carburetor. Okay, we're gonna flow the two barrel, the four barrel adapter by itself to start out with before we flow our two barrel carburetor. I just wanna make sure that this isn't the limiting factor in terms of flow. We wanna see what this flows and then we put the carburetor, we can see what that flows and go, oh, well, it's flowing the same as the adapter was. That way we have more data and more airflow information. So let's get to it. So remember we're flowing all of these at five inches and then we will convert them to the more common 28 inch number that everybody does. So we've got this all set up. So it's looking like, looking like 234 CFM at five inches. Remember, we're gonna convert that number. Okay, now we're gonna flow the 4412. Yeah, 4412 XP carburetor at the same five inches and then we'll convert it.
Okay, we've got the OG 500 CFM 4412 Holly. We're going to find out how this flows, and that way we can compare it to the new XP version. Super cool. Ooh. But no choke horn, so it'll be interesting to see. We're going to flow it at 5 inches, and then again, I think at 14 inches, like we did with the other one. Two hundred nine, two hundred ten CFM. So it definitely flows less than the uh, modern version. So now let's flow it again at fourteen inches, like we did with the five hundred CFM forty four twelve XP version. Three hundred and fifty-three CFM at fourteen inches. I think I should have made it fifteen. No, fourteen's good. So we got one more forty-four twelve. This one actually is from Quick Fuel, so we want to see if it, there's any difference. This is the the newer XP version, like the Holly, but we want to see if there's any difference between the Quick Fuel version and the Holly version. So let's take a look and see. We're going to start off at fourteen inches, and then we'll go down to five inches. Fuel seemed like it was down a little bit, 372 CFM at 14 inches. We're going to go down to uh, 5 inches and then I'm going to re verify the 4412 from Holly just to make sure that nothing happened to the setup. So we found something very interesting testing the quick fuel version and it flowed less initially than its cousin, <laughs> cousin, the 4412 from Holly. So it flowed about 20 CFM less. And I thought, it shouldn't really do that. It should be very, very close to the same. And what we found out is that the throttle linkage, I'm just going to full throttle when I'm testing the airflow, but this is going over center. So I check the throttle blades and sure enough, it's going past center. So when I release it just a little bit and get the blade straight, the airflow comes back. Something good to check for you guys on your carburetors, make sure, make sure that that thing is up and down, nice and straight. Okay, you guys can join in the fun. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. See if you can see in there. See, so we're going past center. So we even it up to straight, it flows more. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. We're going to turn the bench on. Okay, we're gonna try our first four barrel. This one is a part number 82751, is a Street HP 750. We're gonna flow it at five inches because obviously it's gonna flow a lot more than the two barrel, and we'll see what the flow number is and then obviously convert it up afterwards. So we're gonna flow it right now at five inches. Whoa, four barrel. So we're looking at 451 CFM, again, at five inches. Okay, now we're gonna take the 750 off and put on a 950. Okay, 950 is installed. Let's find out how much it flows. Whoa. Five hundred and eighty CFM again at five inches on the four barrel. Four 
So it should be obvious the set the 950 is flowing quite a bit more than the 750 as we would expect since it's a bigger carb. Let's try another one. Now we've got a what I think is a 750 brawler carburetor. It is part number 750809 four barrel. It does have a choke horn though, which is why I wanted to float. I kind of want to see what's going to happen between a carburetor that has a choke and one that doesn't. We'll see what the airflow is. So our choke is open. Four hundred and thirty-one CFM at five inches. So now we're gonna run a six fifty. Let's flow it up. Three hundred and ninety-three CFM. Now we're talking big power. This is actually the one barrel carburetor for the Pontiac Trophy four cylinder. Lucky for me, it fits on this Weber adapter that we had for something. And the bolt's on. We're gonna flow this thing and see how it does. <laughs> Any bets? Let me know in the comments what you guys think it's gonna flow. One barrel for the win. Yes, whopping 155 CFM at 14 inches. Not doing very well. Obviously, you're not gonna make a lot of power with that thing. Okay, guys, what did we learn from this little adventure flowing all of these carburetors? We flowed a one barrel, we flowed three different two barrels, and we flowed four different four barrels. Well, we got a lot of data, and we found out one thing. Hey, if you go to more than wide open throttle, you lose airflow. We also learned that the new version of the 4412 obviously is better than the old version of the 4412. Otherwise, it wouldn't have come out with a new version. We flowed three different versions of that, and they all work very well. A four barrel does indeed flow more than a two barrel, especially when you flow them at the same depression. A 650 does not flow as much as a 750, and a 750 does not flow as much as, an, as a 950. But guess what? They all flowed better than the one barrel. Our Richard Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing. Flow numbers for the one barrel, the original 4412, and the 4412 XP. Flow numbers for the 650 HP, 750 XP, and 750 Brawler with the choke. Flow numbers for the Quick Fuel 4412, which were the same as the Holly version, and the 950 XP four barrel.